I've recently discussed the possibility that there may actually be antimatter galaxies which were being ripped apart as they are pulled towards the Great Attractor. Alvin's view was that the universe consisted of equal amounts of matter and antimatter, and that they were potentially separated by a laden frost layer. Someone in the comments suggested that this could be observed with a Santilli telescope. So I did some research and discovered that Mr. Santilli was a most remarkable man with many ideas which run contra to the standard dogma. Ruggiero Maria Santilli was born in the central Alpine mountains of Italy in 1935. When he was in high school, he published his first scientific paper showing that space is a universal substratum with extremely high density for the characterization and propagation of electromagnetic waves as well as particles. He graduated with the highest of honors in maths, physics and chemistry from the University of Turin. Following this, he was the chair in nuclear physics at the Avogadro Institute in Turin. In light of the advanced mathematics he developed in his PhD, he was invited in 1967 by the University of Miami to conduct research under NASA support. He then worked at a number of different institutions including Associate Professor of Physics at Boston University, Visiting Professor at MIT and part of the Maths Department at Harvard University. He has published almost 300 papers, received numerous honors and holds numerous patents. He held views which were strongly opposed to the mainstream thinking and was under no illusion that there were some very fundamental problems with the whole notion of an expanding universe. Due to the relatively low velocity of stars in our Milky Way, the main assumption in the early part of the 20th century was that we lived in a static universe. Einstein viewed the universe to be at rest and that the evolution of the universe was determined by its finite matter density. This meant that we lived in a closed universe with no borders. And in order to keep this universe stable, Einstein was forced to introduce the cosmological constant. And this was an outward force which would balance the inward force of gravity. Einstein initially detested this addition, but as time went by and Hubble collected his data on the redshift of galaxies, he saw a way of being able to remove the cosmological constant from his equations. Einstein never explicitly acknowledged the representation of the cosmological redshift via the notion that the universe was expanding. He continued to prefer a static universe which is now clear from some of his unpublished papers written in 1931. Both Einstein, Hubble and Fritz Zwicky adopted the same position that this redshift of galactic light was due to the loss of energy by light to the intergalactic gases. Even today the debate continues. In 2004 an open letter was signed by over 500 scientists and published in The New Scientist. In this letter, they complained about the many inconsistencies of the Big Bang Theory. The struggle against the mainstream adaptation of the Big Bang Theory continues. Dr. Massimo Villata of the National Institute of Astrophysics and Dr. Dragan Hadzukovic, a physicist at CERN, both strongly disagree with the concept of the Big Bang and the subsequent invention of dark energy. In fact, Dr. Massimo Villata has been working on a theory in which the repulsive gravity between matter and antimatter located in the cosmic voids could account for the universe expansion without the need for dark energy or dark matter or even the Big Bang. In his calculations, he shows that a reasonable amount of antimatter located in a particular void could account for the motions of our Milky Way and its surrounding galaxies towards the Great Attractor. It is important to realize that the antimatter would behave in a very similar way to matter and would tend to clump together into larger and larger masses, forming anti-galaxies and anti-stars. Massimo believed that if the antimatter produced radiation, it would be an advanced type of radiation that would unfortunately be undetectable. Dragon, on the other hand, 
His research was based on the microscopic interactions at the particle level. In his view, the repulsive gravity of virtual particles and antiparticles in a quantum vacuum could explain several observations, including effects usually attributed to dark matter. As a result of extensive mathematical, theoretical and experimental research over 40 years, Santilli achieved systematic experiment for confirmation on Earth that light does lose energy to the cool media. This confirms Zwicky's hypothesis of tired light, with the consequential dismissal of the conjecture of the expansion of the universe and its never-ending chain of additional conjectures. I will not go into further detail here, but I might cover this in a separate video. In a nutshell, Santilli had created a new type of mathematics to solve this problem and then confirm it with numerous experiments. There are two important takeaways at this stage. Firstly, light will be redshifted when exposed to a cold medium without any relative motions between the source medium and the observer, and it will be blue shifted when it gains energy from a hot medium and also without relative motions between the source medium and observer. So we end up with a universe which is not expanding. We can explain all of the cosmic redshift using this idea, but now the problem is how do we stop a static universe from collapsing? Santilli's leap was to use this idea with the earlier mentioned idea of antimatter and use these to achieve the stability required. His concept is that our universe is filled with both matter and antimatter galaxies and that these essentially repel themselves. He also proposed that these anti-galaxies would emit anti-light which would essentially behave similar to the normal light, but would refract in the opposite direction. He has numerous papers on this, and he ended up building a telescope with special optics that he claims to have detected these antimatter galaxies and stars. He also viewed that the universe was balanced, like Alvin, with equal amounts of matter and antimatter, and he believed that the matter was continuously being created within the stars and anti-stars. Santilli is truly a remarkable man, having spent many years of his life developing new mathematics and working secretly on his ideas while working at some of the greatest institutions in the world. I plan on covering more of his work in the future, and I will provide links to some of his material in the description below. But be warned, some of it is reasonably easy to digest, but the majority is very, very complex. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.